So I'll be sharing about um, our experience in using a human-centered design as a technique or as an approach to design a comprehensive newborn monitoring chart here in Kenya. Uh, this work is embedded in the clinical information network that um, has a platform for uh, running quality improvement projects uh, in the newborn and pediatric setting. So what is a human-centered design? Uh, this is a creative approach to problem solving. It's a process that begins with the people. This is very important. The people that you're designing for and ends with new solutions that are purpose-built to suit their needs. And we'll see this uh, how this worked out in, in our setting. But that's the definition by idea. This is a general uh, process. It begins with understanding the, uh, the context, the problems, exploring ideas, and then materializing these ideas. And the key to remember here with the process is that it's quite iterative. So you can go back and forth between understanding, exploring, and materializing throughout the whole design process and in between each of these processes, each of these steps. There are very many tools that are available for design and not limited to these that are listed here. So I'll give a brief example about personas, uh, but there are things like user story mapping, storytelling, process mapping, role play, your typical interviews that we always uh, do as researchers, observations, among other things. The goal of all these tools is to allow you to be able to articulate the problem and very well understand the, the context that you're designing for. So we'll go to the project itself that is designing newborn monitoring charts and give this as an example of the application. So the setting is that uh, the newborn care setting where we have uh, a team of caregivers giving care to any newborn at any given time. So you have many people taking care of these newborns, including the doctors, the nurses, the parents, uh, the nutritionists, and other allied healthcare workers. Therefore, it's important to document the care that they give, both for the person who's documenting for letter reference, and then for others to understand what has happened. However, we have poorly designed charts, um, as we found in our setting, and many charts capture relate, uh, related information, which leads to uh, duplicated efforts. And as Anne has clearly stated, uh, the health workers are doing so many other tasks. And then it would be important to uh, make this process efficient. And of course, there are other problems around documentation. But the main thing we're going to focus on today is uh, the chart design. This is the process that we used for our design. We split it up into two phases. In phase one, we uh, sought to understand the challenges and do the chart design. And then in phase two, that's between July 2019 and March 2020, was about piloting and changing. And you can see the process here from step one to step six. The point is you begin with understanding, you explore ideas, Converge to practical proposals. This we did through three workshops. And then in the last uh, six steps, although we did repeat the sum of the uh, earlier steps, was to uh, develop together, uh, agreeing on what goes into the chat and what doesn't, and then doing the prototyping and changing. And this process uh, goes on and on until you agree eventually that you have something that is uh, useful. So like I mentioned, we did these two, three workshops and then piloting at, three, at four hospitals. And we had also input from a neonatal experts meeting. I'll give a little bit of information on uh, the outputs of the, of the workshops and the process. So in understanding the context, what did we do? We went on to use personas as a tool to help us understand who is it we're designing for. And here we found the most common people uh, likely to be the ones uh, taking care of these babies are um, uh, interns, medical officer interns, and a clinical officer, and of course the nurse. 
and the participants of the workshop went about uh, describing these people, including drawing them and understanding what they do. And their goal ultimately for all of them is to provide best practice care to newborns. So in thinking about what then happened during the workshop and piloting, we were able to move from aspirations to workshop outcomes to testing outcomes. Some of the aspirations included um, nurses and uh, suggesting that we have a chart that could cover, uh, be used to monitor a patient for seven days. This is a paper-based chart and many other things that they wanted to be included. However, we had to build consensus and agree and discuss, is this reasonable, a reasonable thing to be asking of the person who's feeling, the personas that we described. If you put something in a chart, you are essentially asking someone to record something in that slot. So we had to critically think back together with the nurses and the pediatricians on are these reasonable requests. So this led to our workshop outcomes. And then in the testing outcomes, um, we ended up changing once more because things uh, didn't quite work out as expected. So the workshop outcomes, we had two charts. One is called a standard um, monitoring chart. You can use it over four days if you print it in duplex on an A4 chart. So you use day one here to day two here, flip it over and do the same for day three and four. The what we were calling an intensive monitoring chart um, is just a chart that provides you with more slots, filling uh, similar information, but a few extra things for the baby who needs closer monitoring. And again, if you print it on both sides, you use uh, one chart for two days. However, we had to uh, come to this uh, merged chart, which now we are calling the comprehensive newborn monitoring chart. The questions that kept coming up were, how do you select which baby needs which chart if you're going to have two charts in the world? What if a baby is on three hourly monitoring and then suddenly requires closer monitoring, what happens? So those are practical issues. And then considering resource limitations in our facilities, is it possible that we introduce some level of wastage if we ask them to print two charts uh, and some don't get used and some get used? So, and then the print, complex printing mechanisms in the hospitals, uh, which then asking people to print two charts just complicates everything even further. So this is why we ended up with this one chart that captures everything. And an important thing to note here is that this monitoring chart is very different from the vital science charts that you'll find in many other settings. Here we combine the feed and fluid prescription and monitoring plus vital science and other assessment all in one place. So what does it mean to implement the new charts? We move from up to even five charts in some places. Uh, the proposed version one charts were two. And finally, we end up with just one chart to cover um, all this information that was being covered by the old charts. Uh, so what are my reflections on the HCD process and what we ended up with? We were able to clearly document and understand the problem using the uh, tools that are available. And the HCD process for me and for the team made this idea of the user and the context and practicalities be the important thing that you constantly think about so that whenever suggestions are made, you run them through a filter to understand whether this will be practical or not. And the final question, of course, we ask ourselves or I ask myself is, did this work? We're in the evaluation phase and one nurse told me during an interview is that I thought whoever came up with this idea did a very good thing because this comprehensive chart is now able to cover almost everything to each and every baby, whether they need to be in intensive care or standard care. And this for me means that yes, we, we did a good thing and we continue to test and make it even better. I'd like to ac acknowledge the supervis my supervisory team and of course acknowledge the uh, teams at the hospitals, the nurses, the pediatricians, and the research team at the Clinical Information Network here at Cambridge Welcome Trust for the support and for making all this work possible. If you would like to read more about the entire process, um, the publication is available online for, ac for free access, and you can always read more about what, what, what we did in the, in the entire project. Thank you.